Brady. Okay, every project needs some goals. So here's what my goal was in testing these two tablets. Been on this journey, and I'll show my journey in a little bit here of trying to find the ultimate business tool for writing notes. So I want to handwrite notes. I want to have a history of these notes with me. So I walk into a meeting, and this is a meeting that we have once every three months. I can look back at my old notes. I want the notes to be organized. I want to be able to find these notes three months later. And in the new digital world, you should be able to search the notes. These are the th four fundamental things that I needed. And move into have the tool available quickly, so boot up time, uh, not too heavy, and close to eight and a half inch by 11 as possible. I mean, we've been born and grew up with this size of a writing instrument. Um, now, as you can see from this, it could actually be quite smaller, but as close to this as possible. Have a tool that lasts, aka the battery. Um, previous units I've had, you know, failed miserably because. Um, I couldn't last a whole meeting and I would carry an extra battery um, just so I get through the meeting. Fit into my digital life. I use Windows and I use a Mac operating system and I also use a mobile operating systems. Move data to it, move data from it. Those are basically the goals. Um, and I'll show a quick full of history, but this is my first real move into a digital experience and this one here I ended up carrying that extra battery so I actually had an extra battery that I could just you know quickly pull this battery off and put another battery on so I could make it cut through the meeting because this wouldn't last more than an hour or two we move up to the modern more modern and currently this is my product of choice it's a Windows machine it's extremely nice um, you know not only is it a tablet you can flip it over now you have the battery length of the top bottom part and touch screen of the top part very useful you can actually dislodge those now move to a fairly light though only about an hour in some device which is extremely useful the issue comes into is this boot up time. I want to take my notes now and it's still booting up. Okay, we're almost there. Well, it's still thinking. It's making sure it's me. And retina scanners did work yay so now I'm in to the actual application and I can now actually take notes and I've got organization here and notes this if it wasn't for that boot up time if this wasn't something that it's a fairly heavy and only lasts an hour it would be pretty close to being perfect um, though writing on glass doesn't have the same experience as writing on paper. So I've been using this, or similar, for years now, working well. The goal of moving to these was to get back to doing actual paper. Well, when reality is, I'll walk through a little demo here. We can take an iPhone nowadays and I created an if this then that script that I just take a quick photo of my handwriting and automatically going to appear over here in OneNotes. So I'll be the only one here in February. Now, <clears throat> I was hoping that with the 
Remarkable or Sony, I could do the same thing. Actually move the digital imagery into here. And what I found is, which is really strange, is when you bring something in from Sony, you don't get the ink. That's very, very strange. Um, if I open up the actual PDF, there's ink. Test the, these words are written. But when you go to the, whenever you bring in something from the Sony, the PDF into OneNote, the ink never shows up. Without the ink showing up, it doesn't, OneNote doesn't translate it. When you look at Remarkables, it does bring the ink in. The orientation depends, everything is in portrait whether you wrote landscape or not, which once again, that's because the tablet doesn't seem to know which way you're going. And what's really odd on the Remarkable is even if you have something as clean as this, Kevin Cossaboon, one note cannot re recognize the text. It ends up thinking it's a foreign language or foreign for English speakers. So yet what does work is handwritten notes. Hopefully it's over here by now. It's not. So let's just sync. There's my handwritten note that I took the photo of with my phone. There is orientation issue. Right click. We're going to rotate right 90 degrees. Gonna right click on this. Copy text from picture. I'm going to go over here. We're going to paste. Yeah, I didn't get some of it. But handwritten notes with with me, history of, have a note. And a lot of what was written is actually copied right out in text. And though I don't really want to do that, what I really want to be able to do is, if I'm over here, I want to search for data. Right. It finds it in the handwriting here as well as here. And this is just using a piece of paper. Obviously, using OneNote and the, the Porsche does this as well, but neither Remarkable or Sony will actually do this. So, both are really a failure for where I needed to go because they have no way to really search the notes that you're writing. Camera one rolling, camera two rolling, take five, history. My journey started with the Palm Pilot. Um, I bought it in 1997, I actually pre-ordered it before it launched. It turned out to be a wild success with many years um, and was the best PDA. And you actually wrote down here on the little screen in a thing called graffiti, which I still have the habit of using. The contender at the time was actually this one here. It was the Apple Newton. It was out a few years before and I was thinking of going to it. It was a lot more money, but as it turns out, this ended up being a much bigger hit than this, so choice was right. After that, the Windows operating system evolved, probably because of the challenge of this uh, Palm Pilot to the pocket PCs with their OS, and this is actually the case. The unit was pretty small, and it was a PDA, and you could take notes, and it would sync with your PC. You can connect it to this new Fangle wireless Wi-Fi with the Cisco adapter. Anyways, that, that was really great. Um, and then I went back to pen and paper for a while because I just wanted to take notes quickly and scan them in. And then Samsung and Microsoft came out with the Ultra Mobile PC in 2006. Um, this was, you could, it was a full PC with a special OS, um, so you could do a lot of PC type stuff on this. But the big thing was I could write on the screen with a stylus and in OneNote. 
and this one note became really cool. And notice the stylus is really small and thin. So this was pretty good for a while. And then Apple came along with their notoriously famous iPad. So we came out with an iPad, and surprisingly, especially compared to today's things, this thing was heavy. Um, and you wrote on it with a stylus that ended up being like a crayon because it was designed for your finger. So it wasn't accurate, and writing on it was very difficult. Um, so that was a kind of a false start. And then the PC markets, Windows decided to just embrace Ultra, the Windows tablet functionality built into standard Windows, and I looked at and owned this for a while. Once again, the screen got bigger, it was easier to write. Um, you could undock it and just use this. Still quite a weight to this. Um, you know, iCore 5 processor, but you had the full functionality of PC. This worked well. Then the Surface products from Microsoft directly, and I owned a couple of those, and I don't have one to show. But then after the Surface Pro 3, I went to a Surface Book, and then Surface Book I bought too quickly, and it was a train wreck when I bought it. Uh, first gen, new operating system. So I ended up buying the iPad Pro. Now we're starting to get in something really large and a real and a stylus that was comfortable. That's one of the things the Surface had was a stylus that felt like a pencil so you could write, write on it and had the right dimensions. Um, then after the iPad Pro, then it worked well, but CPUs keep increasing and we're dealing with the Windows stuff and I'll talk about that a little later, but it's not about a Porsche laptop, which is basically a you know, just regular laptop, but you know, a cool feature was, I don't know if it's going to do this with it off, but you know, once again it could turn into a tablet, right? So now you got a tablet, pretty heavy, but full functionality of OneNote and all the Microsoft um, Office products, etc. So huge functionality. Um, stylus was pretty good. You know, it's steel. You've got a race built onto it. Um, worked really well. Didn't have what the Surface had, which was an eraser on the back end, which was really cool. You could just flip the pen over. So then, but this takes a while to boot up. So then comes 2018. 2018, we now have some new contenders, which we're going to review here, which are the Remarkable from the Kickstart program and the Sony Digital Paper. Two interesting products, both extremely thin. The, uh, the Sony one is like bizarrely thin. Then the same weight, this feels heavier because it's smaller, so it's a little more dense. Um, and that's what we're going to review now. We're going to focus really on handwriting and uh, you know, digital flow of taking notes in a business meeting. Camera one rolling. Number two rolling, remarkable performance number four. All right, so from an off position, this unit is a little while taking on. So it turns on via this single button here, push and hold, and it'll boot up. It takes a fair amount of time to boot up. You wouldn't want to turn it off just before you walk into a meeting. This is way too long. Though it's a quick boot, um, compared to a PC, it's still not what you want to be doing when someone's saying, hey, here's my phone number, and you want to write it down, or here's an email. Um, it does have a sleep mode, so now that's powered up. You can see, once again, just tap that button once. It goes to sleep quickly. Now saving power. Quickly tap it again, it's back up. So that's pretty instantaneous. Most of the settings are achieved through here. Um, the device, really very little um, uh, settings here. Um, 
your account. That's interesting how this works. I'll ex explain that in a little bit. Um, Wi-Fi. I haven't been able to connect it to my office Wi-Fi, which is a real problem, WPA2 Enterprise. Um, a lot of the advantages from this comes from its Wi-Fi connectivity. Power, um, you know, allowed to sleep, turn off. One of the interesting things is uh, the power indicator here. You never get a number. You only get an icon. Um, tell you how much storage is in use. Um, security. You can set a passcode, which is a great idea because you know, unlike a piece of paper um, or a notebook, you can secure this so if it gets lost, you don't lose or people don't get ex um, access to it. Really, that's about it. Most of the other stuff is set on the computer. Um, as I mentioned, you can set, create folders. You can tap on the folder. That gets you into the folder if you hit the three buttons. Now you can actually rename it right here. And this I just call it meeting and I can use my finger or the stylus um, say okay and I've renamed this folder and go into the folder and as I mentioned on previous videos if I create a notebook in this folder um, it will um, actually create the notebook in the folder of where I was. Um, one of the things I wish is I had to set my favorite pen type um, and now I'm going to go in and pick my favorite template. I didn't want to do that. That is something I'll discuss here in a minute. Um, I'm going to go to templates. The, I mentioned this before, this is kind of useless. There's way too many templates and that's not the one I wanted. Um, selecting them. The icons here are pretty useless in my opinion. Um, so if trying to find the, you know, there. Now what is good is once you pick it for, through the, for the whole use, every time I add a page, um, it remembers the um, template and I can actually switch it. Um, And I'll just pick a uh, grid. All right, so now I, you know, I want to do some drawing. So I got a nice grid here. All right, um, I'm going to go back. It's This one has the lines. This one has the grids. And by default, it's going to pick up the last page use. So I can go back in here and say, no, now I need to go back to this template. And it's page four. So now I got page four with lines, page three with squares. That, you know, very useful. Um, it's actually, that works really, really well. The other nice thing about this advantage is it has this thing called layers. In a business setting, I don't know when you would actually um, need to do separate layers. That's more for drawings, etc. You know, you're, you're layering stuff on. Um, but what's interesting is you can turn off the background. That's kind of neat. Um, Okay, uh, I think that is about it for this. Um, once again, there's a home button that takes you back here. You can put uh, folders within folders. So now, if I navigate here, so I'm into my files, meeting test, folder three, and I can put a f notebook in here. All right. And once again, it defaulted back to the pencil with the blank screen, not where I want to be. So every time I have to open, start a new um, node, I have to go in here and I have to go find the template I want. Now I'm set. Change my ink to the pen I want. <clears throat> now, now I'm ready to go. A little bit of a pain, but I'm really responsive and pretty quick. Okay, and once again, put to sleep nice and quick. Off it goes. Camera one rolling, camera two rolling, Sony Performance number two. And like Remarkables, the Sony has nothing on the screen when off. So turn it on, press and hold this button for a bit. I found this before. There it goes. It's quite a long press to get it to come on.
One of the other things about Sony is when you actually first initialize it, it's definitely written by a bunch of lawyers because you have a ELA that's 14 pages long to accept. Um, okay, so I'll put you right back into the document you're writing. Um, the, it does have the sleep mode, so if you just press it quickly, it goes into a sleep mode, which once again is probably where you'd normally have it. All right, quickly, and that puts it right back in nice and quick. Um, for this one, all the settings are obtained through here. Uh, once again, wireless. Um, once again, I couldn't get it to connect to my office, WPA2 Enterprise. Um, this one's nice that it has Bluetooth and NFC. So at the office where I couldn't get it on the Wi-Fi to connect, it would connect via Bluetooth, which was useful, um, especially considering the, the way the two different uh, connectivity works. Um, I don't have NS NFC, so that I never tested that. Screen lock, once again, I'd highly recommend it to protect your documents. Um, then, let's leave this. Uh, return to document. And here we are. Um, and I think that's really about it on this one. There's not a whole lot else. You know, you tap the screen once to get sort of the in document menu where you, know, you can do things. Now, this is interesting. Insert and delete current page. Um, it can insert a page in between pages. So I'm on page two right now. And this was a nice feature. If you hit insert page, new page, and if we go to thumbnail view, just so we can see what's going on here, you can see that you know the new page is actually before page two. Um, you can delete uh, individual pages too. So you can go here and say, I don't want this page. And you can say, delete the page. Um, there it goes. Uh, and what else? Um, it's really about it. Um, the side by side, um, I'll talk about landscape here in another video. Um, and once again, over here is just all your recently used documents. Uh, the, as I mentioned before, the Remarkable one actually has this capability of um, a lot better where things are stored, right? All the notes go into this note, notes folder. You can create a hierarchy of um, folders, but you can't actually, to get folders in there, you have to actually um, use the PC app to actually move things around. Um, Okay, so that's it for the performance. Camera one, rolling, camera two, rolling. All right, PC, Sony, one. 
Okay, in this demo, we're going to show what the software is like. So it comes with a Mac software, and I'm not going to review any of the PC software called Digital App. And one of the things you'll notice is it has to connect to the paper. So right now, if it cannot connect to the paper, it won't actually launch, which is one of my problems. Um, now with Bluetooth, it will because it's not connected because I'm actually connected to my corporate VPN. So I'm going to disconnect here, and that will. Once the VPN drops, I should be able to connect. So let's go back and try this again. Digital paper. There it goes. It's going to try to connect. Now it connected. So this was in a other video. I was saying it's like it's tethered between the two. Now it's now that it's here. If I go to notes. Um, I'm going to see everything the same as I do over here on, if I go to system storage and I go to notes, it's the same list, right? Get a little more details here of what's going on. Now, what's also interesting on the Sony app, if I grab one of these and open them, it immediately opens it as a PDF. It doesn't open it in the app, it launches it as a PDF, okay? Um, so getting things off of this is pretty easy. You can just actually select multiple you do right click say transfer documents and uh, to Sony will throw this in this directory if we say open them there and voila it actually just dumped all the those documents here as individual documents um, really simple and easy um, now also as I mentioned you can't move things on the tablet you have to do it from here so you can say cut with in digital and then you can go find folders Let's go. Uh, oh. okay we're all right system storage and then go down into a subdirectory and say paste it here and instantaneously that actually disappeared over here and it's now in that directory which is really cool now getting data into the device is even easier i got this word document it's just that standard template now i've been working on this i want to take it into a meeting to have a conversation um, with this it is so easy it's just you go file print just as you would print it to a and now I can print it to a printer or under here instead of save as a PDF, which we'll see the other one requires, where it has this print PDF to digital paper. And immediately what you'll see down here is a little icon appeared. And now it just immediately sends it and it's now on the document and open. Um, once again, if I go to like Excel and I look at this graph that's for some reason not showing anything um, I'm sure why that's must have been because I resized my screen let's shrink Excel let's bring Excel back up yeah how about refresh no um, okay so let's see what it looks like if we print the print and it's going to print portrait, but we'll change this to landscape because this is kind of fun to watch over there. And we'll fit it on a single page. There we go. And once again, every app has this print to digital paper. As soon as I hit that, you'll see a little icon over here, and immediately it just transfers to there. And this time, in landscape, um, just moves it right over, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, visually, it's pretty cool. Now, to contrast that to the Remarkable, as I mentioned, Remarkable is kind of always connected. So, we'll see that in the next video. Camera one rolling. Camera two rolling. PC Connect remarkable all right so as I explained in the um, drawing that I was trying to do that um, the remarkable actually does 
um, this connection into a um, cloud. So this and this are not tethered. This just, if it was on any Wi-Fi that could get to the internet, this experience that we're going to see would work. It doesn't have to be on the same Wi-Fi, unlike the Sony. So their app, remarkable app here, um, launches up. It's pretty basic. It does mirror what's on here as far as files. So if you look here, same file structure. Um, unlike the Sony, you can create files, uh, directories, and rename them on here. And what you're seeing now is the, my laptop wasn't quite in sync. So it's actually laptop is talking to their cloud and downloading um, updates, updated documents, right? Synchronizing the library there. You can see that. Um, so it's bringing down stuff it did not have on itself. That's because I have other PCs connected to this account, and if I put documents on there, they go to the cloud, they go to this unit, but if this wasn't running the app, it didn't synchronize. So now we're synchronized. Getting things off, once again, because you can file things, um, you can just grab the, if you look at it here, unlike um, the other product, it actually keeps it in it's a little app, so it doesn't actually put it out to a PDF to view it. This is within the viewer, which is kind of cool. Um, I can rename it here. Um, to export it, you right-click, you can export it as a PNG, which is interesting. If you export it as a PDF, it's going to want to know where. So we'll throw it here in the demo folder, remarkable demo. We'll hit save, and off we have in the remarkable demo we have a nice little pdf right and black ink not blue um so actually my scrolling is not working well but there we are there's all my ha lovely handwriting test files um so you see all the pens are in black ink um the other product had the capability of doing blue and red ink um the Next thing that to note though is when you're exporting files, you can't export multiple files. Um, so here we have two different uh, notebooks. I can click it and I can multi select them, but when I try the export features are uh, grayed out. You actually have to export one at a time. It'd be kind of a pain at the end of a year that if you're trying to empty the device to actually export everything. Um, now this has one page, this has four pages. So if we export this one as a PNG, which is kind of interesting, uh, we'll throw this test remarkable in the demo and say place folder here because what, this time what it did was it created a subdirectory and in it each page is its own file. That was cool. Now, getting stuff into the Remarkables a little more clumsy than the other one. For the other one, if you remember, we just had to, there was a PDF option to actually, you know, print it to the digital paper. This time we actually have to save it as a PDF, find a directory to store it in, Right, and go here and call it, you know, save it as trip. And now that this application has created a PDF, then I can go over here and I can go import. Desktop. This is not as smooth by any stretch. But after I brought it in, what you'll see is as soon as it brought it in, it didn't go into this directory. It did come up here on Remarkable though, right? The file immediately appeared there. Now, what it does is by default, it puts it, I think, right on this directory right up top. Looking for trip. So now it is in the files. That's kind of cool. Okay, yay. Um, and once again for Excel, same idea. If I wanted to print this like before, I just had to send a digital ink this time I actually have to go in here, say, save as PDF, find the folder I want to put it into, and this is not the most intuitive, hit save, and now, I, now what you can do is drag and drop. So, 
Yeah, cancel. That's my standing off to the side to use the laptop. So if I go over here and go into Remarkable and look at that demo, there's the pen tablet tables. And I can actually click that. Oh. Okay, click. This is laptop issues. Click and drag and just drop, and it automatically will appear over here. Um, it's pretty quick, it goes up through the cloud and back. Um, the other thing is on the Remarkable, it automatically you know, opens it up in the right orientation, but as I mentioned in previous views, it doesn't change the menu structure. It doesn't realize that, that that's not a portrait. The Sony did when it immediately, um, when it opens up that same document that we sent it, um, it would actually, it changed the menu structure up here automatically because it knew it was in that uh, landscape mode. Um, once again, the digital workflow on and off is, is not the best. Now, one thing this does have, which is really cool, is in the Remarkable app. This is good for, say, a webinar or something if you're an engineer like myself. You can go in here and say, okay, let's, let's go through the little things we have to do. Let's go to landscape. All right, now, now I'm in landscape mode. And I'm going to do this a thing called Live View. So I go to Live View, and over here on the PC, I'll get an offer to accept it. Yeah. I'll accept the live view. Now, unfortunately, it's not in the right orientation, but it's got... quickly as I can. I'm always learning more. Not sure why my Alexa decided to talk. But um, you can see... Yes, I talk all the time. You can see here that the... Um, when I actually right here they will actually show up there. Now, once again, it's beta, so this doesn't understand that I'm in landscape, right? So if we actually hide that, we go back. Um, let's leave this document. Um, let's go to Quick Sheets, Junk Pile. Uh, change this to Portrait. And let's go back to Live View. Live View is off. It's connecting. Over here, I'm going to need to actually, there it is. I accept. Now, as I type, now as I actually, I don't like that marker actually. And this is a good example of it because the pen now is third down, the pencil is number. I don't know when this occurs that it decides to switch these around, but it's kind of irritating. So you'll notice in a few moments this pen will actually move back up to the number one spot. So that's well, kind of an irritating thing. Okay, close that down. Okay, test, right? Blah, blah, blah. Draw a circle, connect. Now what I'm doing is these two cameras are in sync. So you can see it's pretty good for live live um, view. So, you know, you could talk about, you know, you have to take this and move this over to here, right? If I had a printed document up, um, it would, I could mark it up and discuss it. Now, if I go here, okay, that's still that way. So, as soon as I leave the sheet live view dies, um, now let's go into, here's a great business example of a document I brought in. Uh, this this document, this PDF, right? We printed it, and now I have to discuss it on the meeting, right? And at this point, you can see now that my pen is up here, not down here. So now it's pen, pencil, paintbrush, where it was before, pencil, paintbrush, pen. So these things keep shuffling around, and knowing which target to hit is kind of irritating. Um, but let's go into live view again. And once again, my PC, well, I'll need to accept it when the offer comes up. There's the offer. All right, there we are. Um, so now, for this one, now that I'm in this, right, we could be talking like, say, hey, you know, let's get that, change, and it didn't work. It's interesting. 
Welcome to beta. Not sure why that didn't, there it goes. That was just a long leg to actually update that. Um, once again, it auto-picked the wrong writing instrument for me. Not sure why it keeps doing that. So, yeah, you can, and it does have this highlighter feature. So you can go like this. We're getting a lot of latency here. Eventually, the live view should update the screen. Do, do, do. Uh, this is a little slow. Now, one of the other things that, as a, um, on the other, unlike the other one, see it just highlighted that in yellow. Um, these things don't need to be on the same Wi-Fi. So, if I'm on a public network at work on this, um, I can. Now my pens are mixed up again. Pens are down there. Um, pens down there, not up there. Um, the this can be on actually a corporate network, uh, WPA2 Enterprise, so I can do my business. And I put this on a public hotspot, I can actually transfer files over Wi-Fi. It just goes over the internet. So, pretty cool. I think that's about all the features I wanted to show on this. Thank you for watching.